Hi, it's Wesley with ExpandaCraft once again. I am the creator and manufacturer of the ExpandaCraft. That's the outrigger kit that's on this old canoe. Um, this is a 16 foot 9 inch ExpandaCraft outrigger kit on a uh, second hand canoe I picked up cheap and turned into this expedition style outrigger canoe. It serves a purpose more so than a pontoon boat. It allows you to have this amount of space. Of course, I have a decking that goes in here, a, a removable decking, so you can pitch a tent and go out, drafts about two inches. Um, but I'm not here to talk about the boat so much as I am here to talk about motors. Uh, we're going to talk about the test results because we started a 55-pound thrust Newport vessels and a... 40 pound thrust motor guide and we also just for kicks tested out this water snake 18 pound thrust motor it weighs I don't, I don't know four pounds and then the battery maybe maybe five I don't know um, I was surprised how well this thing did uh, remember this Trolling motors, electric trolling motors like this, are designed to push a heavy boat slowly, not a lightweight, slick boat, quickly. Now, granted, this boat is no longer a lightweight, but in comparison to something like a pontoon boat or a bass boat, uh, that's for all you people who say, why don't you just get a real boat, Wesley? Well, because you can't do this with a pontoon or a bass boat. Uh, you can't take it apart quickly and just use the canoe. You can't put it on top of your roof rack and also tow a 36-foot camper. So that's why this works for me and a lot of other people. Well, anyway, going back to this motor, this little motor actually has quite a sophisticated shape to the propeller. It has a little bit of a cup to it. Uh, you don't find that cupping in these motors. Because again, this is made to push a heavy boat slowly. This is made to push a light boat relatively quickly, even though it is so small. And we do have another video that you can see what this thing did. It was amazing. I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, come around over this side. Now, what I did is uh, there was this big thing. I'll go get it. It was this monster thing that was bolted onto the gunnels and every, every which way to mount the motors to because we're going to do a side-by-side -side test. It's big, it's heavy, it's ugly, and also I've decided it's unnecessary because as you can see, now that this is all open, I can sit here in this seat and yes, I can paddle this boat by myself up <laughs> careful um i can paddle this up current a little bit um and if i had somebody on the front we can move okay not like it would if you were just paddling a canoe but you can make it go so if you are uh, going up a river or down a river you can steer the boat from the back without any electric assist but we put this little bitty water snake on there and it was tremendous it could really move the boat all right so the idea behind having the uh, side mounted if you will uh, motor is you're going to lock this down you're not going to steer the boat with the motor that's what this arm was for is so that you could steer it like i'm steering with the rudder but since i put this uh, together with a rudder by the way subscribe because we're going to have a tutorial a master class if you will on how to make this rudder because this is old rudder it's been in my fleet for 10 12 years it's been out in the florida sun uh, and neglected rain and what have you but we're going to show you how to make this very very durable rudder and how to attach the rudder to a pointy back canoe Flat back canoes are great if you want to put a motor on it and you can put some serious horsepower on it. Five, eight, ten, fifteen horsepower. I've seen some folks put them on. Um, 
But the point is, if you try to steer the boat with an electric motor or any motor, you're constantly having to do little corrections, little left, little right, little left, little right, little left. With a rudder and a fixed position for the motor, especially the low-powered uh, electrics, if you do that, then you have so little effort that you need to steer the boat, and it's more effective. Um, the other thing is, is, if you try to turn an electric motor, if you're going five miles an hour and you turn sharply, the, the, it has a tendency to cavitate, and then you got no steerage whatsoever. With a rudder, you turn sharply, the motor still is going forward, and you get a lot more steering with a rudder than with the uh, thrust steering or thrust vectoring, if you will. All right, now I'm going to really talk about something. Prop walk. What is prop walk? Prop walk is the tendency for the thrust of the motor as it's rotating. And if you'll notice, this blade is a um, counterclockwise or left turning propeller. The tendency to push the boat's stern this way or that way is called prop walk. In this particular case, if you'll think of this as a wheel, and the wheel was turning and it was on the ground, as the wheel turns this way, it's going to push the stern of the boat that way. So, as opposed to this motor, now this motor is a different type of motor. We'll talk about that more in just a moment. But this motor is a clockwise, yeah. This one turns clockwise. So if I mounted this one on this side of the boat, it's going to exacerbate the problem of prop walk because as you mount a motor off center, asymmetrical, especially if you don't mount it to the canoe and you mount it like in, the, in between over here, the farther away from the center line of the boat that you go, the more it'll have the tendency to steer the boat in the opposite on, to the opposite direction of which you are mounting it. So, here's the tricky part. If you have a prop like this one, which is counterclockwise, you want to mount it on the right side of the boat or the starboard side to counteract the tendency of the offset motor to turn the boat left, that will push the stern this way. If you did it the opposite, like with this one, which rotates this direction, your prop walk is going to take the, uh, the canoe and turn it more so uh, and, and exacerbate the problem of prop walk. So that's, that's it, basically. If you have a counter rotating or counterclockwise rotating prop, you want to put it on this side, starboard. If you have a clockwise rotating part uh, prop, then you want to put it on the port side, the left. Now, let's talk about the difference of motors. The 55 pound thrust and the 40 pound thrust motor, they pretty much did the same job. What I don't know is how much draw the 55 pound has electrically more than the 40 because if the 40 is doing the same job as a 50 and it's pulling less amperage well then the 40 is going to be the better choice um, you'll go farther at five miles per hour is about what you're going to go with these boats your 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 um your speed is relative uh, or relegated by the pitch of the prop more so than anything and the size of the prop uh, again, because they're made to push heavy boats slowly, not slick, lightweight boats quickly. This, on the other hand, is a different thing. Let me show you a little closer. This is the Vaquita motor. Now, I have obviously done some home engineering. I made a foil shape where it's in the water. 
so that it's more efficient through the water than it would be if it was just a square or are like the trolling motors here that have a round pole once you get up to five miles per hour it's it's it cavitates behind and makes a little trickle with this one nothing it's just slices through the water like a hot knife through butter it's also a brushless motor now a brushless motor and you're gonna have to do your google search on this brushless motors are more efficient than brushed motors they have brushes that touch there's a physical contact that the electricity and things spin uh, google that i'm not going to spend too much time on it but this is a brushless motor much more efficient they do make 55 65 110 pound thrust brushless motors and we will be um, buying one soon and testing that so make sure you subscribe so that not only you can get the master class on how to build this whole thing how to do the rudder but you're also going to learn more and more about small engines on boats like this uh, Vikita um, they are supplied by ePropulsions.com e um, I really really like this motor uh, it's not it's cheap, but uh, the little motor and its battery, like eight and a half pounds. It's pretty low. And it lasts and lasts. And it's surprising. Like I was surprised with that little um, water snake, I am more so impressed with what goes on with this. Because this is not only a brushless motor with a propeller that is designed for a lightweight boat. This is not designed to push a bass boat or a pontoon boat. This is made for, like this one is the Expandacraft 12-foot sit on top uh, paddle catch. But I think I'm going to adapt this to push the canoe as well and give it a test. So you'll have to subscribe and see the test when we do that. Um, this, is a, this is a ducted fan. That's what this casing is. This casing is what's called a ducted fan, which actually helps the thrust so it makes it more efficient so the idea is if you're going to go with electric electric is all about these days it's just all about the battery technology how far can you go on a charge that's the key and we're going to do a test tomorrow as a matter of fact on how far we can go i'm going to test out that little water snake and see how far it can go on this tiny little battery here it is a lithium ion battery um, it's called Amped Outdoors. It's a 30 amp hour battery. So we're going to put it to the test. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Let me check my messages. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I would love for you guys to, uh, as we're getting rained on, I'd love for you guys to comment and uh, let me know if you've done some testing uh, with electric motors specifically. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, enjoy a good day on the water tomorrow if it doesn't rain on us like this. But anyway, expandthecraft.com. Don't forget to subscribe when our, uh, our on our YouTube channel, uh, our Facebook, and um, what else do we have? Instagram. Instagram. Instagram, yes. Make sure you subscribe and follow us and do all of that so that you can see all of the new things that's going to be going on with Expand the Craft and all these different tests with different motors. Expand the Craft.